this God is Babylon. Okay. That was in the vision and the voice. This is the book, the vision and the voice, which is the commentaries that came out recently. This stuff was this this thing cost a lot of money at first until this book was uh, reprinted again for thirty five dollars. It's on paperback now for like sixteen. The vision and the voice, Alistair Crawley, and he saw these visions of Babylon. So in the nineteen fifties and the nineteen forties, became a guy by the name of Jack Parson. And you'll get all of this particular information here in this particular book. There's several books on that. But the one I want you to get is this particular one here. But this one here breaks down all the stuff. The synchronicity and the seventh seal, the one by Peter Moon, they go into this mystery of Babylon. Now, this is where this shit get interesting. Uh, in the 1950s, this guy by the name of Jack Parson decided that he wanted to tap into this interesting and bring through this entity called Babylon in the 1950s. She told him it would be a great sacrifice and he ended up blowing up himself and killing himself, or uh, killing himself, but not before he brought forth this in the 1940s, before he brought through this particular stuff called the Book of Babylon, where it was this entity coming in and giving him a simulation of her coming to the earth. Her coming to the earth. Now, this is where this shit gets very interesting here. This book just came out two weeks ago, and they give the whole story of the Babylon thing in this particular book, Synchronicity and the Seven Seal by Peter Moon. And lo and behold, I had read these stories before in the 90s. But it gives this particular information about this entity. There's nothing but an a earlier name for the goddess Aset or Isis. Okay? Now, he gives the story because they know, even in this particular book, he documents the pyramids of Montauk. There's a whole chapter on Babylon, but he also, they, he also, by having a lot of this occult study, he also goes in to say that uh, um, in the chapter of Babylon, he says the Sphinx is representative of the goddess in the form of the beast who was known as Babylon and eventually Isis or Aset. In this book here, chapter 29 of Pyramids of Montauk, which he, he comes back with his new book and talk about Babylon. And this guy wanted to incarnate this earlier ancient form of Arset, and she said, I'm going to come through here again, not with you, but there's got to be a great sacrifice. As a result, Jack Parson ends up killing himself, but he was good friends. But this, in this particular case, the guy who would record down all the stuff was L. Ron Hubbard, that later on is all of the part of Scientology that all the movie stars and all are part of. You see what I'm saying? He was the one who was the, the, the recorder of some of this particular information. Jack Parson ends up dying and killing himself, and L. Ron Hubbard later on writes Dianetics and starts the Scientology thing. Okay, this Babylon is this... In the book of the law, New comes and say, in the future, I will be known as my secret name. It take them 90 years, and in the course of that, in all this study of people around the world, they came to the conclusion that the secret name would be Babylon. Now, this all has something to do with why the fuck they are in Iraq. It all connects. So, in September, no, in January, I've been knowing this sister here for about six, seven years. We met at the Million Woman March in, 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 in Philly, um, in Philly about, uh, uh, I did a lecture in Philly on the same day. And that was the day it was so many women gathering at that march that I saw a vision of a city that they got in Africa that we can't see because we can't go within a hundred mile radius of this crystal city they got in Africa. I saw a vision of it, but and then came back a group, a, a, a group of people from Trenton, New Jersey, met this girl from Kenya that said that she knew about the city and had a, a book on the city, that, uh, on some reports of the city, but they can't go to the city within a hundred mile radius. They can't get within the borders of the city. I saw all that in the vision with all them women coming together in Philadelphia at that particular time. But I met this particular sister at the time. I said, wait a minute, you, I got three cousins and my aunt, and you look like all three of these cousins and my aunt. And then come to find out, I got a brother that's a year younger than me, 
and she looked like his identical twin. She looked like uh, uh, his identical twin. And I said, you family. And we've been knowing each other all this time, and all, all this particular time. And then all of a sudden, I went to, went to D.C. in January to speak. Uh, January to speak. And I didn't know that I was going to D.C. to hook up with her, to fall in love and do all this kind of thing here. But to make a long story short, when I got back from D.C., we started corresponding on another level and stuff like that. Her to tap in to a certain amount of in energies and try to see what comes up. And when she tap in, here come this doggone entity called Babylon. And I'm like, God damn. Put that very key. A lot of the motifs to understand this entity of Babylon is in Crawley's Tarot. And here's a picture of a woman riding a beast, or a lion-type beast, and the woman riding this particular beast, Babylon and her beast, uh, ba Babylon and her beast. So in this particular case, in these days, I do a lot of time on my fucking back. <laughs> Didn't you see the stuff in the, in the tantra thing? Do you see? <laughs> Don't you see in the transfer thing when you go in and get the, the books on Kali, Kali, Sheena Master, Durga, and all these ones, there's a whole book called the Ten Mahavadayas. Now, this is a very interesting book because we know, we know that all these gods, gods we got in earlier pantheon, those used to be the goddesses. And later on in the patriarchal realm, a lot of those was converted to gods. And all those attributes you think that uh, gods in earlier pantheons, the Typhonian and the feminine realm, those all used to be characteristics of goddess. But the only stuff that survived is in India of ten Mahavadayas, they're called. The ten Mahavadayas by David R. Kinsley, and they got these ten entities. And all, and, but all of them are always sitting on top of the man. The man is on his back, and they're sitting on top of the man and stuff like that and all. Well, uh, and, and all, you know, um, and, uh, but in here, she's riding the beast, which is interesting because ironic, when you get the Crawlers Tarot deck, which is some of the most beautiful aspects of the Crawlers Tarot deck, when you buy the book, the Book of Thoth, which this is one of the most advanced Tarot books because what happened was when Crawley tapped into the angel Awas, or the angel that came out to give him the Book of the Law, when he tapped in, there was a lot of stuff that was lost in the other tarots that Awas replaced. So it is the most advanced, is Crawley Tarot Tarot Day. But when you get the Book of Thoth, Crawley was writing in his fucking, his neurotic style, and it's one of the hard books to understand. This particular guy, Lon Milo Duquette, just came out back out this January with this book, Understanding Alistair Crawley's Thoth Tarot. So if you're going to buy the book, buy the cards of Crawley's Row, and then get the book by Lon Milo Duquette and Babylon and all this type of stuff is all through there, which is the basis of this particular card, um, this particular card called Lust, Babylon and Her Beast. Now, so as a result, when we tapped in, I said, now tap in. And we're going to find out what entities is going to be going to summons. And we went through a series of things and nothing happened. And then the, she came up as Babylon. I'm like, God damn, that's crawling. I said, I know Babylon. That's a form of, new, form of ISIS and a form of all that. And I said, oh, okay. So when I was telling you about that realm of Aset being taken back over, when she tapped in and Babylon came, I said, oh, and then, but. They always talk about the gods will come back with a new name. And as a result, the new name is Babylonia. All this has, because remember now, Babylon is Iraq. And they were over there trying to get something, which I showed you the stuff that was in the museum the last time I was here. I showed you these pictures on what they really went to the museum 
to get is these particular pictures right here. And I showed these the last time I was here. Let me get this particular picture. Y'all bear with me. Y'all all right? Because I'm going to show you how this sexual kung fu getting ready to work. Because Babylon taught me. Yeah. She taught a nigga how this shit is done. Now, we know that these pictures we talked about the last time I was here, coming from Eric Van Daniken's book, he wrote a book called Chariot of the Gods. Big debate in the scholarly community. He said, well, fuck it. I'll come back the next time and show you proof of stuff. So his book here, this is the new one, Van Daniken, In Search of Ancient Gods, My Pictorial Evidence of the Impossible, author of Chariots of the Gods. Then he comes back with these pictures coming from where? The Iraq Museum. But this is a goddess, a form of Ishtar, and this is a god, a form of Osar. Ishtar is nothing but the Iraqian or the Babylonian Aset, which is also the goddess Babylon. It all coincides. And this is a form of Osiris. You see the crown. So now don't think of these aliens from outer space. You are the Ishtar and the Osiris. The aliens came years ago. That's when you used to be the gods that later on became humans. Now you got David Icke and all these people telling you to be scared of this, which is scared of yourself because you are the reptilian, the kundalini people. And you reading these books and the government is promoting that shit. Want you to be scared of something coming. And like I told you before, anybody come kick this crack in the ass is my friend. <laughs> know what I'm saying? As a matter of fact, I said, hell, man, okay, I tell you what. I'll give you 50,000 messed up Negroes just to wipe this whole race of, of, of beasts off the planet. Just for the simple fact I want to see somebody die. But going right along for the mere fact that nothing more. <laughs> we got to get some relief down here. But these are the stuff that, that what this war is all about because they're running scared because they know there was some type of incarnation coming. But we tapped into this particular energy and this goes down to what is going on at this particular time. All right. So Babylon shows up. Babylon shows up and immediately she manifests and comes through not only as a psychic channel, channel but a force and an entity within that child right there. As a result, she showed how she want to play. And that is this. Now, try to understand what's going on here. We're not talking about nothing dangerous. We're not talking about anything.